Hey everyone. So one thing that I've been thinking a lot about is how I translate some of the food access and gardening and things that I've been able to do in DC back here at home. And I just found something awesome. Also, this is why I love walking around in the district um, because you just notice things that you can't find online. So here I'm walking in the Castle Hill-ish area and I found, I've walked past the Glover Street Community Garden. Check this out. These community gardens are all over the city and I see them a lot in Manhattan, but um, there's, there's fewer, sometimes they're harder to find in the Bronx, but check it out. There are community garden spaces and you can do the same thing that I do in DC here at home. What I love about this one is that it's an entire community space. Check it out. You got the barbecue, you got the grill, you have places to sit, and you have the garden beds. So here's the next event that, um, that's happening right here in the community. It's next Friday. It's hosted by Teatro Sea, and it's a mask making workshop, which is so beautiful because it incorporates that cultural element. You know, mass making has really important roots in the Caribbean, indigenous, and, and African ancestry of so many of the communities that live here. So that's amazing. Here it is, and here's what I love here too. Nature is a fundamental right of every New Yorker. So check out NYRP. I'm sure there's some in your neighborhood too. Also check this out. What are those, begonias? I don't know. What I love too is growing plants that are culturally familiar to the community is so important. If you look all the way back there, that looks like composting. It looks like they've got composting going on, which is so awesome too, because composting is really hard to do in a neighborhood like this. We just don't have the, the pickups and the ease of it that a lot of other communities have. So that's really how you do it right. That is such a core component of the Green New Deal is having all of these projects make sense in a cultural context. And it's an area that I, and we get the most pushback on um, pe because people say like, why do you need to do that? That's too hard. But when you really think about it, when someone says that it's too hard, to do a green space that grows yucca instead of, I don't know, cauliflower or something. Um, it, you're, what you're doing is that you're taking a colonial approach to environmentalism. And that is why a lot of communities of color get resistant to certain environmentalist movements because they come with a colonial, a colonial lens on them and and it should be no surprise that um, that sometimes a lot of these projects some don't work out occasionally because our communities are naturally in tune to live in an environmentally conscious way. You know, a lot of us are one or two generations removed from living off the land. My family in, in Puerto Rico, in many ways, lives off the land, but. Um, if I went to a predominantly white community and said, okay, you guys are gonna be growing plantains and yucca and all these things that you don't know how to cook, it's, and that your palate isn't accustomed to, it's gonna be like cute for a little bit, but it's not easy. It, you need to make it as easy as possible to kind of just flow into these communities and to make it work. So the way that you do this right is that you don't kind of come into a community and impose what you think is right. That is what so many community development projects get wrong, whether it's housing, whether it's envir environmental projects. What you need to do is plug in and find leaders in these communities and support them and also just like pay attention to when they're speaking about these things uh, because so often they'll be saying these things forever and they just go on deaf ears and then when someone brings it up from a different community 
that's like the first time it's acknowledged when so many people have been talking about this for a long time. So that's a huge element to all of this.